The information provided on LifeInterruptedRadio.com is for educational purposes only. Welcome everyone to the Autoimmune Hour. I'm Sharon Saylor from SharonSaylor.com. And as always, it's my honor and deep, deep pleasure to bring you another exciting episode. We're closing in on 250 episodes. Can you believe it? Every Friday night, 7 p.m., a new episode drops. And I have met the most amazing people along the way. And this healing journey is just something that uh, if you'd asked me five years ago at the diagnosis uh, and you had told me this, I would have said like, no way, no how, that's that's crazy. But it has just been very exciting and wonderful. And you know what the most exciting thing is, is I've mentioned this before, is how I meet people along this journey or I have a guest and they introduce me to someone. Well, this is kind of like what I say, like three, what is that? Three, three parts apart or something, however they describe that. (laughs) There were three steps apart because uh, this was someone who was introduced to me by someone who had introduced me to you, who someone who introduced me to. So that's really cool, isn't it? Isn't that amazing how word grows and how we can find great community and just stay in community and relationship. So let me introduce her because she's awesome. And uh, she is on a mission to just cut out the overwhelming wellness noise and to teach us how to eat for our best gut health and to give up dieting, that awful word dieting, there's a reason D-I-E is in that word, and tapping into our own intuition and take health back into our own hands. And I couldn't agree more with all of that. I can kind of raise my hand and say, yes, (laughs) me too. I'm on that mission too, plus others. And her name is Hannah Aylward. And she is a certified holistic health coach, private chef, gut health expert, and founder of HAN, H-A-N. She helps people around the world take their health back into their own hands and live in their bodies and help them thrive, whether it's healthy weight, clear mind, glowing skin, abundant energy, and always a huge smile. (laughs) I love that. Hannah cuts through all the overwhelming noise and teaches us how to live and eat well again. So welcome, Hannah. Thanks for being on the show. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh my gosh, me too. This is so exciting. And I just, so I was mentioning how, you know, they always say, you know, you're very closely connected by just a few steps, people away. And I just find this so fascinating how the community continues to grow and find such awesome people around the world. Now, uh, tell us a little bit about your journey, how you became a a certified holistic health coach. I know you had some own issues with your own gut. Yes, totally. Oh my goodness. My health and wellness journey started a long time ago. I think I was probably 14 years old. And initially it kind of all stemmed from um, lack of self-worth and some body image issues. And I'm pretty sure I hopped on my first diet, uh, that terrible word, (laughs) when I was about 14 years old. And purely Mm -hmm. for just like superficial reasons, um, wanting to kind of control the way that I looked and be smaller and make my body smaller which um, makes me so sad today, <laughs> but that, that, that I used to feel that way. Um, so that's kind of why it all really started. And then after years and years of trial and error and hopping on all of the diets and hopping off all of them and then creating this own um, you know, restrict and binge cycle and equating my worth to how much I weighed and just all of this negative, negative self-talk and energy, I started to kind of realize that wow, there's a lot more to this whole quote unquote healthy eating thing. Um, It goes so much deeper than just what I weigh or my pant size. And it started really, you know, changing the way that I saw the world and the way that I thought and, and how happy I was and how clearly I could think and how much energy I had. And, and it just really started to shift my life. And then throughout, once I stopped kind of chasing the diets and started chasing the actual uh, science. <laughs> um, then I kind of came about the whole concept of gut health and how the gut is the epicenter of our health. And, you know, most of the immune system resides there and um, the gut brain connection and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that kind of really locked me in. And I, I made some connections there with, you know, having taken so many ran- rounds of antibiotics as a little girl, I would constantly had sinus infections and 
I swear I would take, you know, two rounds of antibiotics every cold season. And it was just, and, you know, also as a child eating chocolate muffins and, and Slurpees and having no even concept of what I was eating and no awareness there. <laughs> um, I, I definitely didn't grow up, grow up in, you know, my, my family did their best, but I wasn't, um, I didn't eat the way that I do now. And I always like really stating that because some people, you know, will say, well, it's so easy for you. And it wasn't, you know, it took years and years of just like slow steps, one foot in front of the other, and then kind of learning, empowering myself with that education, and then kind of going from there. You know, you don't just go from zero to 100 overnight, most people, unless you like really, really, truly have to. Um, so I started kind of making the connection there between um, my gut and how I had done so much damage to it, especially, you know, due to some like childhood trauma, antibiotics, poor diet, really high stress. Um, and that chronic dieting can really mess up your gut health and your mental health. Um, and then I was like, this is, this is really it. And this is where it's, this is where it's at. This is how I can help people. And this is how I can help myself. So I started just jumping into everything that I was learning and, and bringing those things in. And finally, for the first time in my life, I felt like things were working and um, it made me so much happier. The biggest thing that changed for me was um, my happiness and my, my mental health really when I started nourishing my gut. And yeah, I just kind of that latched on. And then I started working with clients and, um, I put them all through my kind of gut repair protocol and the symptoms just started disappearing. So, and, and you know, and I say that I'm very not, I'm not into the band-aids and I'm not into the, um, five minute fix for this. I don't believe that that's sustainable or realistic or anything like that. But once you really start getting into that gut health and nourishing the gut, it affects so many other sim systems in the body that, it almost is that like cool, fun band aid. Of course it's not, it's this like big process and you've got to do the work, but, um, it's, it really tends to just like wipe all of these other symptoms away. So once I saw that and was seeing these transformations that my clients were going through, I, I was in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It took me a while to understand about our digestion being the major part of our health as well. And, you're right. It, sometimes it is hard to give up because there's emotional components to eating too. There's social oh gosh, components yes. to eating, you know, and as you mentioned, there's self-worth components to eating. There's so many parts that we glom onto our poor digestive system. Let, let's talk a little bit about, you mentioned the word happiness. And I know when I cleaned up my diet and I thought I was eating healthy, that's the scary thing. Although mm -hmm. I, looking back now, I realized I really didn't, I was thinking a salad with just a little bit of salad dressing was fine, not realizing that particular salad dressing had 20 different chemicals I couldn't pronounce in it or things like that. So in my mind, if, if I had a doctor had said, well, how are you eating? And I said, oh, I'm having salad, I'm having a veggies and you know, whatever. And they, oh, that's good. But nobody really told me about not just what, like, you know, a, a good veggie, but is it a quality veggie and how's it cooked and what else are you having with or on it? So, totally. so let's talk a little bit about how the diet that we choose in a long way of my question is, I was so surprised at how much happier I got to. I had less anxiety. Yeah. I had less moments of overthinking. And I was surprised. I know neither of us are psychologists or psychiatrists, but to, from your point of view with you and your clients, how have they experienced this change in gut health and then all of a sudden their, their happiness quotient? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I could say so many things about this. <laughs> um, but first and foremost, you know, there is a gut brain connection and it's very strong. And this is something that I've written about a lot. Um, and we have something called the vagus nerve, which I'm sure you're familiar with. And it's actually a, a pair of nerves that connects um, right like at the brain stem and comes all the way down and it actually passes through the digestive system. Um, and this really links the gut and the brain. And there's actually more, they're constantly signaling each other through this bi-directional pathway with messaging, but there's actually more messages going from the gut to the brain than from the brain to the gut. So we kind of think of our brain and our thoughts as running the show all the time, you know, what we think and, and it's just, we're so in our heads. But in reality, if there's something, the gut is signaling these, these messengers kind of up to the brain. And so if there's inflammation and distress and kind of chaos going on in the gut that is going to affect our mental health um, and our brain, as well as, you know, brain fog and, and things like that. 
Um, so that's kind of the strongest connection. I've worked with a lot of women that have really bad anxiety. Um, and we can kind of quiet that, uh, with using diet as, as one of those tools. And there's many things here. There's the gut brain connection. Um, and there's also the fact that with the gut kind of health program that I have people, people take on. Um, another thing that we focus on is blood sugar balance and it's very, it's kind of like nutrition 101. It's very basic. Um, but there are some key components to have to make sure that your blood sugar levels are kind of being balanced at every meal. Um, so we're always, we have a blood sugar curve and we're, we're always kind of riding that. Um, but if we start out the morning, like most Americans do with a frappuccino and a muffin, right? So we we've eaten nothing and then we go all the way up because all that sugar just totally spikes our blood sugar. And with that really high mountain comes a very low fall. So then we fall really low. Um, and at that point we feel like, oh my gosh, we're really irritable. We're really like, um, antsy. We're, we're feeling kind of shaky. We're feeling that, that term hangry, right? And our body doesn't even necessarily need more calories. Not that I count calories, but, um, it's just our blood sugar dipping so low. So then we feel like we need to eat something else. And then also with that comes cravings for sugar and carbs because our body's kind of freaking out. So then we do maybe a sandwich with two slices of bread or maybe some pizza or something or a Coke or something like that. And it just shoots back up and then it dips really low. And I find that by better balancing that blood sugar curve, which is, is, I don't want to say it's simple, but it's, it can be done, you know, easy, easily for most people, um, is by combining the combination of healthy fats, um, good quality proteins, fiber and greens at every meal. That's going to help turn off over eight hunger hormones in the body. And with that, that blood sugar curve goes from a huge mountain to a really low dip to like this little kind of wave that we have. And with that comes more mental clarity, less brain fog and less irritability. So it's kind of a, a combination of things that that's happening in the body. That's just supporting. I'm, I talk a lot about getting the body on our side because like life's hard enough. We've got a lot <laughs> that we're dealing with <laughs> all the time. We're, you know, someone, we have curveballs thrown at us all the time. So I'm like, let's get our body on our side so we can live the life that we want and better manage all of this stuff and go after our dreams and be able to run around with our nephew and all of, all of those kind of things. So the gut brain connection, going back to that, and then the blood sugar um, connection as well. Um, as well as when, when people start to get relief from symptoms, um, the stress naturally goes down in the body. Also the power of the mind with how, how much stress can affect our mind and how much our thoughts can affect our bodies. So when you are just given this program and you really actually believe in this program and you believe that it's going to help you and you believe that it's, you know, so amazing, um, the stress naturally goes down in the body and that alone can help the body heal, <laughs> you know, um, just kind of having hope and faith and believing in something. Um, and then with the symptoms lessening, people are happier, right? I mean, of course you're going to be happier when your stomach isn't like in knots and your bloating is out of, out of the wazoo and you're anxious. And when those symptoms go down, it's just way easier to be happier. You're not fighting these things constantly. So it's kind of connected in a lot of ways. Um, but it's amazing what I see people go through because they come to me most of the time for symptoms, right? Like bloating. Um, maybe they've heard leaky gut or they've been told they have IBS, which is a complete umbrella term, which is nonspecific and doesn't really mean anything. It just means that your digestion is like messed up. Um, or they are having trouble sleeping or they have really low energy or they have, I do do a lot of work with people with skin conditions. So they have like abnormal rashes that no one can explain or cystic acne or eczema or psoriasis, anything like that. And um, with that, you know, these people come to me for that. And then not only do those symptoms kind of go away, but also they find that they're, they wake up, right? They're like, oh man, I had one client, she was like three weeks in, I launched a new product online because I was feeling so creative. Our brains just, just work better and, and we're feeling, we're, you know, more connected to our energy. And I've had other people, um, a different client, you know, at the end of the program, she quit her job. She was like, I realized that my job was totally toxic and I was unhappy. Um, so it's all connected, <laughs> you know, yeah, of course it's all connected. Yeah. I always like to say that, you know, if you really thought about it, you got a lot of bacteria in your gut is actually partially running the show. <laughs> you know, I like to totally. Think, have, you, have you ever thought about some million trillion bacteria in your gut? You know, are actually uh, 
you know, whispering in the guide's the, the, the guide's ear here right. and running totally. the show. And I think people are kind of grossed out by that idea. But taking care of that part of our body is extremely important. Now, one thing I wanted to talk about, you said get the body on our side. Now, I look at it differently, Hannah. I, I get my mind on our, my body's side. I am so amazed at the healing power of this amazing machine when I just sort of step back and stop overthinking, uh, sleep well, stress reduction, eat well, and just let it do its thing. And that's why I'm always about like, is the body not on my side or, or maybe I'm not on my body's side. And oftentimes mm. I'm not on my body's side. <laughs> something saying, Oh, but it's so-and-so's birthday. You could just have, you know, whatever that maybe, you know, is going to cause a, an allergic reaction or some other sensitivity in you. And, you know, so that's why I always say it's me, not on my body's side. <laughs> I just, mm-hmm. I got to align my thoughts and my, my, um, resilience, my willpower, my, uh, my whole knowing that, you know, the body will heal itself given the right conditions. And that's, the, that's the, my little asterisk, given the right conditions. And too often I find self-sabotage comes into play. Oh, absolutely. Um, I talk a lot about this as well, because um, especially for, and this is an overgeneralization, but I, I think especially for women, we have a way more emotional connection to food. Um, whereas men kind of just skip meals and don't really think about it. And then like eat a pizza and we're kind of like, when's our next time that we can eat or do we have everything or cause we're nurturers and we want to take care of ourselves and others and all of that. Um, and there's a lot of self-sabotage that comes in. And, you know, I think a small part of it is just being human <laughs> and, and, you know, not being perfect and accepting these little pieces of it. And, I also prompt my clients to really, you know, take a look at what they're doing and take a look and see if their habits are serving them and their habits have gotten them to where their habits and their thoughts have gotten them to where they are today and is where they are today, a place where they want to be, you know, and just make it like super practical. Like I've been doing this and this is where I am. Is this working? If it's not, it's time to change something. If you don't, you're just going to stay the same. Right. So kind of trying to take some emotion out of it and also kind of trying to identify and look at our self-limiting beliefs and what we believe about these foods, what we believe about healthy eating, um, and what we believe about ourselves and our own strength and our own bodies, right? And if we believe that healthy eating has to be this like miserable calorie counting, stressful, expensive experience, then it's going to be that for us. And if we believe that it can be really fun and delicious and kind of this new path to explore to only enhance our experience, then it's going to be that way for us. But we have to really question it. And we have so many thoughts every single day and they just run, 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 run the show. Um, But we really have to, we are not our thoughts. They're just thoughts, you know, and we have to kind of look at those and observe those and see um, if they're, if they're getting us to where we want to be. Um, So, you know, self, and and also it connects back to self-worth. I talk to a lot of women and um, they don't prioritize their own self-care or they don't believe that it's even possible for them. And I'm like, why would you think that? Of course it's possible for you. What makes you so special that it's possible for the rest of us and not you? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, that and too, and I think though about self-care, oftentimes as women, we put uh, children, uh, elderly family members, spouses, uh, partners, whatever, uh, first. And I fall into that trap sometimes myself realizing and I get, when I become reawakened to the moment like, oh, I, I'm putting the, all of that first and I am starting to feel it in my body because I then tell myself, you know, if something, if this body breaks down, I'm no good to anyone. <laughs> so that's my motivation. Okay, self-care time and then just regroup and start over again on that practice because realizing that if you keep putting yourself last pretty soon you won't be able to function and none of those things that are so dear to you that maybe you're placing above you which i encourage you not to but maybe you are uh, they're not going to get done either if you're if you're on the couch with such brain fog and fatigue that you can't get up exactly and i think you know i don't have children so i also fully understand that I don't understand that, you know, and some women are like, just wait until you have kids. (laughs) 
Um, so I, I know that I also don't understand that, but I am a firm believer of exactly what you said and, and that you can't take care of other people if you, if you're not taken care of, there's not any, there's nothing for you to give when you're sick or when you're, you know, super fatigued or, or then you, you're in such a low mental space and physical health space that you're showing up in a negative way. And we've all been there. You know, we've, we've had a really long day and something's gone wrong. And maybe we just like got an extra coffee instead of doing this or something like that. And then by the end of the day, we get home and we explode on someone that is undeserving of it, you know? And so it's, it's, it manifests itself in all of these different ways, but it's so important to take care of yourself so you can show up for others and also teach that to the people around you, you know, and, and influence those people around you and, and remove the selfishness from it. Um, and actually allow it to be more serving to other people for you to take care of yourself so you can better serve them. And then just on a very practical level, knowing the little tricks, having, you know, having the healthy food around, having the snacks around, knowing how to order out and because life gets busy and life gets, and there are different things going on and, you know, you'll have a family member visit or like right now I mentioned, I fled a hurricane and came up to Boston. This is not my home, you know? So it's, <laughs> it's just maintaining these little practices um, that I have where I can and best, and also ditching the fear and the stress, right. And realizing I'm not in my normal environment. I'm not in my own kitchen. I'm not sleeping in my own bed. Um, so I'm going to do my best, you know, and it's not going to be the exact routine that I upkeep on my day to day, which I love <laughs> um, and, and very attached to, but it's, it's good enough for now. And it's also temporary. Yeah, absolutely. We need to take a quick commercial break and I'm going to slurp on one of my indulgences. This is my little smoothie drink. It tastes like a creamsicle. It's not, it's all <laughs> veggies. It's turmeric. What gives it the color? Carrots and veggies. Um, carrots and turmeric is what gives it its creamsicle. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I love that. So you guys all just uh, enjoy that while I'm slurping on this and we'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone, to the Autoimmune Hour. I'm Sharon Saylor from SharonSaylor.com. And tonight we're here with Hannah Aylworth. And she is a certified holistic health coach, private chef, and gut health expert. And she's been sharing about her own journey back to gut health, as well as some of the tips and tricks that she's learned in helping hundreds of people get their gut health reestablished into that nice that nice, wonderful place. And during the commercial break, we were talking about my little my little drink here. And I just want to say, it's not one that I drink every day because it's kind of high glycemic, uh, got that high glycemic level, but I just treat myself to a little cup every so often like this. And it's got carrot, carrot, turmeric, ginger, green apple, and just a splash of coconut milk. But I don't suggest it every day because it's got a lot of high glycemic stuff in there, but it's tasty and keeps me going through an interview. So there you go. And some of you might be wondering, well, Sharon, where's your tea? You know what? I decided to give up tea for three weeks to see what happened. And that was four weeks ago. And I'm not going to say I'm going to give it up forever. I might splurge someday. But I found that I would much rather make these fun little crazy veggie drinks and have those instead of my tea. So there you go. About Two or three months ago, we had an expert on who said I shouldn't be drinking tea. So I kind of took her up on that challenge. But the mental part of it, Hannah, was it took me about six weeks to gear myself up for the mental part of the challenge. Totally. <laughs> yeah, that can be difficult, especially when there's such ingrained staples. Yeah, it was absolutely an ingrained staple in me. I, I had not just a, a joy of the taste, but I know I had a mental sort of attachment to having my cup of tea and so anyway that so f weird how we can get um, think that our body needs it when we really find out it's just some sort of an emotional attachment to it oh my gosh mine is coffee for sure and I can drink a little bit of it and be okay but you know during certain times of my life I'll go to drink more and then it'll start to negatively affect me and kind of wind me up um, but it's a big mental hurdle to get over every time I give it up <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I think giving ourselves plenty of grace when we do, uh, and maybe when we slip back to having a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and not beating ourselves up. I find that a lot of people, as we're going through the healing journey, they forget where they were when they started the healing journey and they're down in the valley. And as we're going up the healing mountain, you know, well, so, okay, you, you slipped, you had your favorite food for maybe a week or 
a day or a week or whatever, but you're back on track now. You're not down in this valley. So please don't beat yourself up. Absolutely. I mean, it's so important to keep that into perspective. And even going back to what you said about your salad dressing, having a million ingredients and, and you thinking that you are eating well, you know, I, I myself really stay to very specific foods and I exclude certain foods for my gut health and for my brain health and all of that. Eating fast food, hamburgers and French fries to eating a salad with a salad dressing that maybe isn't the best, to me, that's still a step in the right direction. Just the fact that you're putting more awareness towards it. And if you're willing to continue learning and growing from there, I think you're better off with the salad than you are with the hamburger and French fries. (laughs) (laughs) Well, for so many reasons to do. And this is not about hamburgers. This is like about the quality of the food that you can find in certain less than desirable eating establishments. So even choosing, even choosing high quality products for your home cooking and things like that, there's nothing wrong with an occasional hamburger or an occasional French fry. It's just where it's sourced and how it's cooked and the love and care that's put into the, uh, to the making of the food that's important. Because I found for myself when I eat it out, and I'm thinking I'm even eating, I was eating at a, it's a salad place where they prep you sort of like it's not a salad bar because you say I'll take some of that and I'll take some of that and they put it into a salad for you supposedly very healthy but I started to have a reaction while I was eating it in my mouth and my lips kind of feeling weird I'm like what's going on and I went back and I asked and they actually spray something it's supposedly healthy but obviously my body didn't like to keep everything looking fresh oh wow and that was a surprise to me and obviously I'm not eating there anymore But so even if things look healthy like that, uh, you could be absolutely surprised in your how your body reacts. I was the only one of the group of us five women that were having a nice time that had any reaction to it. It's all so you know individualized, Mm -hmm. but um, that's why I tend to personally I tend to eat at home more now just because Mm -hmm. I can source my own food and make sure that it's completely washed and I don't spray anything on it to keep it extra green for. (laughs) for a while or whatever. Right, right. So I think people sometimes go, oh, or maybe let's say the salad, oh, I'm allergic to, you know, lettuce or something. Well, when did it happen? And are you really allergic to lettuce? Or how do you know, like in my kid's situation, they actually did put something on it to keep it looking fresh. And I think I'm pretty sure that's what it was because I've had let, let a sense that I'm fine. Right. I know. Oh my gosh, this could, this could put us on a whole new topic, but I see a lot of this happening, um, especially false triggered food sensitivities happening when someone is in poor gut health. So you can get a food sensitivity test done um, bef- say before going through a gut repair program and afterwards. And I've worked with one person who comes to mind specifically, but she was triggering, you know, that she was sensitive to a lot of healthy foods, healthy foods. And I know it's individual, but things like lettuce, things like chickpeas, things like oats. Um, and then she went through my program and at, on the other end, she got the food sensitivity test done again and she showed no food sensitivities. <laughs> so the body can kind of trigger these, um, false readings when it's in such a a case of disarray and and inflammation. Oh, absolutely. Because I want to point out that food is nothing but a collection of chemicals. And I know that breaks it down to that's very, sounds very strange. But really, you know, when you take lettuce apart, it's a collection of different types of things that make it lettuce. And oftentimes it just depends. It may not just be the lettuce. It could be anything that your body's reacting to that triggers it, that it sees as something like, "Uh uh-oh, this is just like that other thing, better extinguish it, cause inflammation. And inflammation is just the body's way of protecting you. Mm -hmm. Although chronic long-term inflammation does more harm than good, but realize that when we say the body's attacking itself, this idea of inflammation it really did does have a good purpose in the beginning. It's just that when we allow it to get way out of hand because we continue to put our things into our body that don't, uh, don't benefit it, don't optimize it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that um, a lot of people just dismiss the inflammation. And the whole point is for it to inflame to get our attention, right? And a lot of people just think, oh, it's normal, or it's aging, or it's not that bad. 
or mm, if I, if I have to decrease inflammation, it means I have to stop doing this and I don't want to. <laughs> um, so it, it, exactly. Ideally, you know, initially it can be really, it's, it's our body saying, Hey, pay attention. <laughs> That's, I, something's happening. I don't like pay attention. Yeah. But you know, I've also thought about inflammation in a unique way that in our busy, busy, busy filled lives, oftentimes inflammation can creep up on you. Maybe you wake up and you notice, you know, oh, my shoulder's a little stiff today. I must have slept crooked. And then after a while, you just kind of get used to the stiff shoulder or whatever. And another one I've heard from other people, this was unusual to me, but they had like floating inflammation. Like one day they would wake up and their hand would be really sore. And the next day they'd wake up and it'd be in their other knee or you know, the opposite side knee or something. And they just kept chalking it up to, like you said, aging, exercise, menopause, uh, sleeping wrong, I better buy a new mattress, you know, uh, chasing the grandkids, whatever it was, without realizing that sometimes just because it's inflammation, it doesn't always just stay in the same place. It's the body just trying to heal the whole unit. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And that's what's surprising to me is people like, I didn't realize it was inflammation. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, I think we're also kind of inundated with this information culturally, you know, and even in movies and, and things like that, where as people get older, these things start to happen, you know, so we just kind of accept them or we hear that certain things that when we hit a certain age, this will happen. Um, and I don't think that has to be the way, you know, I think that, that there might be a tendency, but if we start doing certain things, certain self-care practices, I think we can avoid it. That's, that's my inkling. <laughs> <laughs> we can avoid a lot of it. How's that? I'm getting, yes. to, I'm exactly. up into that age where I could say we can definitely avoid a lot of it. And if you're saying, well, Sharon, it's too late to avoid I'm one of those people that have actually reversed a lot of it. So, Beautiful. and I still believe I can continue to reverse. And that's the critical thing there is believing that you can continue to it because here we're back at the mind body connection and what we believe we can create, Absolutely. whether it's negative or positive. And on that positive note, we need to take one final quick commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to talk some more to Hannah about gut health. What are some we'll other back. common things and tips that you would like to share that we haven't had a chance to touch on? So I am a big fan of keeping it simple, as simple as possible, uh, because I think that when it becomes too overwhelming at the beginning, people just opt out and they don't even take it on. And that's something that I feel very passionately about with all of this, these overwhelming theories and diets and trends going on out there now. Uh, I think that we can learn about one thing and then we learn about the next thing and then we learn about the next thing and then we're paralyzed and we make no moves. Um, so I like to start, if you're just starting out, keeping it very simple and increasing your intake of whole foods with one single ingredient. Um, that's where I really like to start. And think of things that don't have ingredients labels, but they are ingredients, right? So an apple is an apple, a carrot is a carrot, um, a grass-fed steak is just that, you know? Um, so really starting there, if you're like, this whole thing really overwhelms me, all of that noise. Other really key things that you can do and experiment with um, to see if you gain benefit from them that are that will really help um, nourish your gut are taking out some of the things that I call common toxic triggers. And those things are gluten and dairy and sugar. Those are kind of like the, the top three. And there's a, there's a bunch of others that we can play around with too. But um, gluten, dairy, and sugar, I see huge results in people from doing just that. Um, but I do want to put a little asterisk here and say that it's not just about going gluten-free, you know, because there are a lot of people that will go quote unquote gluten-free and see no results. But when I say going gluten-free, I don't really mean stop eating bread with gluten and start eating gluten-free bread and gluten-free chips and gluten-free crackers and cookies, right? And because that's not what we want. We want these whole foods that are naturally gluten-free, um, like vegetables. <laughs> so instead of eating those starchy carbohydrates in the form of like a processed cracker, we can eat them in the form of a sweet potato or a squash or something like that, or even millet or quinoa. Um, Though that are those are naturally gluten free grains, right? And then dairy, just I like I said before, I work with a lot of people with digestive issues as well as skin issues. And when we pull the gluten and the dairy, it's just like eighty percent of people it just gets better <laughs> pretty immediately as well. Um, so those are things that you can start with. And then sugar, sugar, sugar. It sneaks into 
absolutely everything. Um, and it's really important to read those ingredients labels and just gain that awareness. It sneaks into everything from, of course, the things that we would think, right? Like candies and sodas. Um, but it also really can sneak into condiments and salad dressings and, uh, even bread and crackers, especially those gluten-free ones, unfortunately, because they take out the gluten and they'll put in more sugar <laughs> or, um, those, those fat free or low fat foods. I'm not really a fan of that craze. Um, and a lot of the time they'll take out the fat and they'll put in more, more sugar. So those are kind of some immediate, super easy things. And, and once again, keeping it simple, like drink more water. This is a lot of people are dehydrated, you know, and, and these other more intense um, healing modalities can be very useful and, and very wonderful. And I'm not trying to knock them, but most people could benefit by just drinking more water and um, doing something during the day that makes them happy, you know, spending 10 minutes in the sun or taking a walk around the block to get some fresh air and move their bodies or, you know, not just coming home and, and throwing themselves on the couch and just like surrendering to the day and pouring a glass of wine. Um, that doesn't feel supportive to me and it doesn't support your overall health, your mental health or your gut health really. Um, so, so just, yeah, keeping it, keeping it simple and as a, especially as a holistic health coach and what we've been talking about, health is holistic. And I always use the example of, you know, the stressed out New Yorker that was once, once me, um, that was, you know, hopping on the subway and chugging their green smoothie and rushing to work and they were late for work. And then they had all their bags and they're bumping into each other and they're, they don't like the weather and they don't like their apartment, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And, and that's not health. And just because you're drinking the green smoothie, it's not going to overcome all of these other things that you're just not even paying attention to. Like the fact that you're unhappy with your job, that you're really stressed, <laughs> that you're tired, <laughs> that you're, you know, that you don't like where you're living. So, so just kind of taking a more holistic view and, and taking 10 minutes, it doesn't take much to just look at your life from a different perspective and, and ask yourself, you know, are these things supporting me? Do they, do they make me feel happy? And if not, maybe they, maybe it's time for them to go. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. There are a lot of toxins besides just the things on the labels that we can't read within our lives. And what's fascinating to me is when you said, keep it simple. I think the other I part of that's awesome when you keep it simple, it's easy just to add one thing a day. It's mm -hmm. not overwhelming. I've read some of these different pro protocols that are all the fad now, and they might come with an instruction manual that's, uh, you know, 50, 100 pages long, and I get overwhelmed. I'm like, yeah, yeah no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I just suggest uh, when you make out your plan and you just, you know, one a day, one a day, or one every other day, whatever works for you, but, you know, at least a few a week, a couple a week, three or four a week, whatever you can do is the way to do it. Because if we optimize one thing a day, I like people say, oh, well, that's 300 and, you know, 50, whatever or times a day that we, a year that we did it. I said, well, not really, because each time you optimize, you're adding it. So it's compounding effect. It's not just the 350 times that you've optimized that you're, continue to compound on top of the one thing that you did the day before, the day before, the day before. And pretty soon, all of a sudden, you wake up one moment, one morning, and you're like, oh, my gosh. You know, you wake up, and like, I woke up, and I don't have a stiff neck. I don't have painful hands. You know, I can stand up, and my feet don't hurt, whatever the issue might be. And that's what so surprises me. So I so applaud your idea of keep it simple. It's critically important and people are like one of the things I talk about in my body language work is I always say in my other life over in my corporate work and I always say what's the number one body language thing that you can share Sharon and they always are so disappointed when I go breathe <laughs> yep <laughs> breathe 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 fully and completely because that's the number one body language you're judged on so even if you don't want to take Hannah's and my advice here for your health that breathing is critically important fully and deeply not high and, and aggravating. When we breathe high, uh, reflect back that Hannah talked about the vagus nerve and it's the sympathetic, parasympathetic, and it's part of the old nervous system in our body, the, the very ancient nervous system of our body that protects us. Well, that's the one that's aggravated if we're in fight or flight. Mm -hmm. And the thing to remember is one way to calm fight or flight, stop, regroup, realize that you're safe because oftentimes it's we're safe. It's just something got triggered. Mm -hmm. Some noise or something flashed us back. 
and take some nice, deep, full 360 breaths, the kind where you feel your ribs and you feel your belly pooch out, not just these high and so breathe. Yeah. Let's talk. Let's talk about meditation and breathing practices, because I know a lot of times people just kind of roll their eyes with meditation, but I say, you know, it doesn't have to be long. You don't have to be sitting there for 30 minutes. Yeah, totally. And, you know, it is um, a lot of people have massive resistance to it, and I can be totally guilty of that myself, thinking when I wake up, I got to go do my thing, and I have my workout, and I have my lemon water, and I just get going, and um, I've really had to shift my perspective into into thinking that this is this is part of my health process, and this is this is part of my work. This isn't part. Um, this isn't dis- distracting me from my work, but this allows me to show up more fully for my work um, because I want to get a benefit from everything. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so. So I had to really switch my perspective on that, and then honestly, if you give yourself three minutes, you'll end up going for 10 because it feels good, (laughs) you know? So the body really wants to do it. And it's not the easiest thing in the world for many of us. And that it totally includes me. And some days I don't do it. And when I do, I feel a lot better, but I'm also a huge fan of like breath work um, because it feels more uh, active to me. So I feel a little less, I'm just, Oh, not doing anything. You know, it's, it's a little easier for my monkey mind to kind of latch on to breath work because I'm still focusing on something and really it feels more active to me. So maybe hopefully that resonates with some people out, out there that are thinking, you know, I can't just sit there and do nothing. Um, I really recommend trying breath work and keeping it very simple, right? Uh, like box breathing is a great way, great place to start. Breathe in for four, hold for four, exhale for four, pause for four. Um, and just let that belly expand. Don't worry about how it looks. Don't worry about how, you know, don't worry about sucking it in, which is actually bad for digestion because you're just compressing everything and allowing yourself to, just as you said, you know, get out of that fight or flight response that many of us exist in um, a lot of the time. You know, we get that email and it kind of tightens it up tightens us up. We get um, something falls on the floor. It tightens us up. We have to get on the subway with a million people that tightens us up and we don't take the time to just kind of come down from that. So once again, keeping it simple if you go from doing no meditation or breathwork practice at all into, you know, just sitting down for two minutes and taking five really deep, luscious uh, belly breaths a day then that is, that's a win for me. Even if it takes, you know, one minute or, or two minutes, it's still progress and it's relative to where you were before. So that's a great place to start. Absolutely. And I'm going to tell you, if somebody is looking where your belly is sticking in and out and they're commenting on that, they're not your friend because they're not making eye contact with you. Okay. <laughs> so that's my, that's my belief about, you know, if they're really watching you breathe down in the belly, I mean, because if we're worried, maybe are they breathing high or not? You could see it in the shoulders. You don't have to look all the way down to somebody's belly. Come on, let's get real. They're not watching your belly. (laughs) (laughs) They shouldn't be. No, they shouldn't be. And in my mind, I'm sure like all of a sudden you can feel your pants get tighter or whatever. Okay, so my belly might be pooching. You know what? Like I said, if they're watching, if if they're watching there, they're not your friend anyway. So move on. That's my belief about it. Well, Hannah, we're down just to the last five minutes. Share with us any final thoughts and how people can get a hold of you and your web address. Yes. It was so much fun having this conversation with you and um, gosh, final thoughts. I mean, I, I just love enriching people's lives with the fact and, and faith that they can do this and that it doesn't, it can be simple and it doesn't have to be this overwhelming thing. And you don't have to just accept um, these diagnoses or these conditions or symptoms that have been happening. And it can be really, really scary. And I'm not, I'm not knocking um, like Western medicine at all. I believe there's a time and a place and I believe it can be very beneficial. Um, But it can also be really scary to go in somewhere and just be told you have this, you take this for the rest of your life and you're out of there five minutes later. That feels really um, disempowering and scary and it doesn't have to be that way. So if that's the one thing that you take from all of this, (laughs) believe that, believe that there's always a way and believe that your body also really wants to operate so, so well for you and wants to be on your side as does your mind. It's just taking some, some tweaks and figuring out what works for you and also allowing some science to guide some decisions and, 
and finding also the person that resonates with you, you know, the, the healthcare professional that resonates with you. Um, that makes you think, Oh, I can do that. Or, Oh, I like what you're saying. And I, I like her energy, you know, or I like his energy and, and kind of finding that person because accountability and just feeling like you're not out there alone and like you're in a community can be healing on its own. So, um, yeah, I hope that that was helpful. And where you can find me is uh, my website, which is www.hannahaleward.com. And I will spell that very quickly for you because I know it's a little tricky. So it's www.hannah and then com. You can reach me there. Um, and if you happen to be in the Orlando area, then you can reap our amazing private chef services, <laughs> um, which we only have there for now. Um, and then I also have, if you really want to kind of, if this has piqued your interest and you're having some digestive issues, maybe bloating, maybe you've been you know, diagnosed with some, with some digestive issue, um, a bad skin condition or low energy, brain fog, anything like that, then I would really recommend starting with my uh, free three-day gut reset, which is always available on my website, totally free. It's a PDF guide that you can just go ahead and download. It gives you three days. The beauty is that the gut microbiome can begin to kind of shift itself in your favor in as little as 48 to 72 hours. Um, not not that that means that that's all you have to do forever, right? But it's a good place to start to kind of get some, get a quick win and get some immediate relief and start to feel amazing and kind of step above your symptoms, step above the kind of fog that's hit you and realize that you can do this and feel better almost immediately. And once again, that's a free download on my website, a great place to start. And I kind of walk you through that whole process. And the recipes are delicious. A lot of people, it's totally all whole foods. It's no juice fasting. It's no, none of that, um, which makes it much more sustainable in my opinion. And um, a lot of people come back and are like, I'm making these recipes forever. And my boyfriend loved this or my husband loved this. So it's totally possible to eat delicious food and also have it be really wholesome and healing too. Well, thank you so much, everyone. That's Hannah Aylward. And we'll have the web address over at understandingautoimmune.com. Have a great week, whatever your adventures. Be sure and join me next week for another brand new episode. And I so thank you for being part of the Courage Club community. If you haven't had a chance to join the community, pop over to understandingautoimmune.com. And right there on the homepage is a just a free opt-in. You could just put your name and ad uh, email address in there. And uh, we'll be part of the community and sharing great, uh, great little surprises and other things happening over there. The information provided on the Autoimmune Hour, Understanding Autoimmune, and Life Interrupted Radio, including the websites understandingautoimmune.com and lifeinterruptedradio.com, plus social media, is for educational purposes only. What you read, hear, and see on the Autoimmune Hour, Understanding Autoimmune, and Life Interrupted Radio, and its websites, and other media outlets is based on experience only. The information should never be used for any legal, diagnostic, or treatment purposes. Always seek sound legal, medical, and or professional advice regarding any problems, conditions, and any of the recommendations you see, hear, or read here on the Autoimmune Hour, Understanding Autoimmune, and Life Interrupted Radio.